Zombies, revenge, snuff films. Ladies and gentlemen, Terror 5. Hey guys, Dustin here. Welcome to another episode of Horroritis. Today I have yet another indie review. This one is Terror 5 from Argentina. This one was directed by Sebastian and Federico Rothstein, Rothstein, something like that. I suck with names. Everyone knows this. It's fine. These guys have never directed a movie before, so this is their first one. And honestly, it's not too bad. This movie is an anthology film set against the background of public outcry against government corruption and things like that in a small Argentina city. Um, basically, the wraparound story here is that there was some sort of accident uh, caused by government negligence. A lot of people died, and it's like a year or two later, and all the people responsible were put on trial, and they've been acquitted. This, of course, causes riots and somehow a zombie attack with the zombies having glowing eyes, which is weird. At the same time, there's several other stories going on within the city. Uh, while this zombie attack is happening, um, one of which features a group of people who are hanging out, drinking, having a good time. One of them is painted up like Gene Simmons. This is never addressed, never explained. Nobody really seems to care. This guy's just there and he's weird. Uh, he also is in possession of a snuff film, which he shows to his friends. At the same time, two guys show up in a deserted alley thinking they're going to get laid. The results are quite a bit different than what they're expecting and altogether very bloody. While at the same time, a man and a woman somewhere else in the city check into a motel thinking that they're going to have a romantic night together and then they realize that they're being watched from behind the mirror in their room. These are the stories within Terror 5. Now, for my American friends who speak only English and hate subtitles, this movie's probably not for you, because being set in Argentina, it is absolutely in nothing but Spanish. However, it does come with subtitles, so if you like to read movies, you're all set. That being said, let's jump into the stuff that I didn't really like about this movie. There's not a whole lot that I didn't like. Like I mentioned earlier, there's the guy that's painted up like Gene Simmons. I don't know why, nobody explains it, nobody seems to care, but for some reason, it kind of irked me. Like, it's not even really anything to do with the movie, it's just, why? What's up with that guy? He's friggin' weird. One thing that really did bother me, though, was the zombies. The zombie idea was really, really cool. These guys are rising from the grave, spoiler alert, because they were victims of government negligence. So when these guys are acquitted, the zombies rise from the ground and decide that they're going to, you know, do their thing to get justice. But their eyes are glowing blue and it's really weird. But at the same time, it's not entirely terrible. I don't I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Like, I don't know why their eyes are glowing. It's not really explained. There's a lot of stuff that's not really explained. You're just kind of thrown into the middle of the story and expected to keep up, which is kind of cool. But at the same time, you know, I'm also trying to focus on subtitles, so it's a bit tricky. Another thing that bothered me was the whole snuff film angle and the motel thing. See, especially with the motel story, there's a lot of nudity there, and while I understand that the nudity is part of that particular story, you know, because they're being watched, because it's part of a bigger thing, I know it's there for a reason, but at the same time, uh, nudity and horror has never really been a big thing for me. Horror is about being scared and things that horrify me and terrify me, and I've never once been scared, terrified, or horrified by boobs or butts, ever. So with those few minor things out of the way, the things I really liked about this movie, one was the gore. There's a decent amount of gore. It's well done. Um, 
Sure, I think there was some CGI there somewhere, but a lot of the effects, at least to me, seemed to be practical. Um, in the motel story, um, there's a scene, and I don't want to ruin a whole lot for you, so I'm not break giving you like whole chunks of story, but just little bits here. There's a scene where a guy is smacked in the face with a hammer multiple times, and every time he's smacked, you know, his head flops back and comes back, and there's... The, the skin is broken and swollen and bloody and it's very realistic, you know, injuries and it looks very, very good and it doesn't look like CGI, even though it quite possibly could be. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks real enough and, you know, I can appreciate that. It's either practical effects or it's really well done CGI which is generally hard to find, especially in indie movies. I also read some of the reviews for this movie on IMDb, and a lot of people said that the stories don't actually interconnect at all, or at least very loosely. And while some of that's true, some of the stories don't seem to be connected, and there's some stories that could have been explored further, I think. Um, for the most part, everything, everything, everything feels like it should be there. Everything feels in place. Nothing feels like it doesn't belong. I just kind of wish, like, uh, the guy at the end of the zombie story, I really wish we could have had a little more information on him. I would have liked to know more about his story. Also, the two guys that are supposed to hook up with the girls in the, uh, in the alley, I wanted to know more about that, not specifically about the guys, but the girl, because, well, if you watch the movie, you'll understand, and you'll want to know exactly what, why, and how. You want to know more about these things. And I feel like some things were just thrown in there for shock value when really deeper stories could have been made. So this movie, even for an indie movie, if the, the acting was good, the cinematography was good, the lighting was good, everything felt like, you know, it was a real movie. And, you know, sometimes indie movies or low-budget movies, they have that certain feel to them where it's just, it's kind of like cringy kind of not great. Some of the acting is really just overdone or not done at all. This movie doesn't suffer from any of those things. This movie is actually good. It feels like a big budget movie or, you know, something that was put out by somebody who knows what they're doing or has done stuff like this before, even for first time directors like the brothers who directed this. I'm not going to try their names again because Good lord, I butchered them. I'm positive I did. But anyway, this movie felt real. It felt like a good movie. And I didn't see any of the signs of, you know, a low budget or indie movie. It just kind of throws you away from, kind of pulls you out of the story. None of those things are in this movie. This movie is good. It's well put together. It's well made. Um... There's not a whole lot to say about it that needs improvement aside from, you know, I wish some of the stories could have gone deeper, but really, I don't think there was enough time to explore deeply into all the stories. So that's my review for Terror 5. This movie is currently available on DVD and multiple on-demand streaming services such as iTunes, Amazon Instant Video, Vudu, Google Play, and several others. Just search for it. I'm sure you'll find it. It's definitely worth checking out. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down button. All relevant links, including the trailer for this movie, social media, and all of that good stuff will be down in the description. If you've got a movie you'd like me to review, or you know somebody who's made an indie film you'd like to get reviewed, send it along to me. That stuff will also be down in the description, or you can email me at thehorroritis at gmail.com. Um, until then, I'm Dustin. This has been Horroritis, and until next time, keep it creepy. Boobs and butts and 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 boobs and butts.